Cinco de Mayo. So tell me. Ah. What have you guys been talking about in my absence? Come on. Thank you. So, bikes. He got hit. <laughs> what did you see last night? Um, oh. A part of my self image. Mmm. Mmm. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Isn't it? It's like, um... It's like, uh... I, I, I have a certain idea of myself. But then, once I realize that it's, it's not true, I'll let you. I'll let you. I think she likes to think about it. She's really. I think it hit her pretty, pretty hard. Oh, it was a problem or good, good mistake. A book. Oh, good. Yeah. Put it in. I was just thinking about something this morning. Good. And it's um, like sometimes when I have a, a success and I realize that it becomes obvious that the image I had of myself was inadequate. Um, then, then maybe I'll now gain like a higher image of myself and now it's like, okay, now I have a higher one. But then, um, if I keep doing that, if that keeps happening, uh, it's like I realize there isn't really any image that's adequate enough. Oh, dangerous. Go ahead. So, um, I'd say the only thing that's more powerful than the pathologos is the self. Hmm.
Well, the belief that the path of Logos is true, that's more powerful than, than one man true? Yes. Why, on what basis do you make that claim? Experience, uh, reflections, dream analysis. Do you have any specific that you can use? Oh. Uh, I was thinking of the Ken Show. Hmm? The Ken Show, many years ago, or recently, insights I have, directions, and how I hmm. slipped into a path of logo, or how I believe the path of logos to be true rather than the experience that I hmm. have, or the evidence. Hmm? Uh, what is the second one, by the way? I could, I'll get more. Okay. Well, I don't know. I do. I. I, I don't know that. I don't know what's. Yeah. I don't know the difference. I don't know what nirvana, the samadhi is, either. That's a pure experience of the one or the self. Okay. Only in negative. Okay. Well, my answer, I would, the first, I, what is the power of the path, what is the power of the path of Logos? Um, is ig, I, my answer is ignorance to that question. Self-evident. Self-evident. But that's what you say when you believe that pathologus is true. It's self-evident. It's true that such and such is happening. And you say, see, it happened. Therefore, Ignoring everything you, else, though. That would lead you to what conclusion? Well, you'd have to deny the other the evidence that is true, actually. Okay. You're raising the possibility of there's more than one thing that's self-evident. Well, it appears to be self-evident, I should no. say. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it appears to be more... It, well, that's the reason why you give it up. It appears to be more self-evident than the brilliant light of being. So, um, what happened last night? I was sick. Oh, no. um, did Josh have a talk? Yeah, he did. Did Josh have a talk? Did he? No, did he? Yes. A dream or? Oh, yeah, he did. Hmm. Talk or dream? Oh, did you see? Oh, yeah. Okay. He's, he had a very... He had a very interesting state. Mm -hmm. It's a, very much like number two. Yeah. Uh, very much like, or...? I think it's the same. It is, Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what did you see? Samadhi. It was a Samadhi. It was a genuine Samadhi of that highest kind. Wow. But what happened? I lost track after that. I got stuck on a joke from Pierre, <laughs> or from David. He, he, was, he was really, um, a couple of things, like, first off, he was really 
caught up in the drama of the dream rather than the state. And also, on reflection, he was putting it down. Why? You got, can you get that? I, I, I don't remember it, but I, I, was, I didn't pay attention at that. Can you recall any part of it? There was a there was a phrase, there was a phrase that he was using. There was a a, a, a sentence that uh, wasn't she disillusioned about? That showed a very a very interesting and profound pathologos. Disillusioned. Having that experience in the dream, he was disillusioned in the dream about the experience. Wow. And he said, Why? I just remember him saying, It's horseshit. <laughs> Something was bullshit. There was nothing in it that he could call knowledge. There was no meaning for him. Meaning, that's right. Therefore, he, de he is demanding that what's happening, he wants to translate it into meaning. knowledge, meaning. What he believes to be knowledge and meaning. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I remember now. That makes sense. Like he was trying to milk it or something. Yeah, and it has no chips. Yeah. <laughs> or or ex expectation. Right. Right. Yeah. Or he had an expectation. I wasn't there. I was sick, so an expectation. Yeah. The. He had some expectation of getting something out of it. Yeah, that's that's a way to put it. But he didn't even see it as an expectation. Right? He saw it as a demand. And right. Disillusioned him. There wasn't anything. Right. That's how sure he was that there should be something. Right. So therefore, can you risk the opinion? What follows? What what? Well, mm -hmm. what follows? The pathologos can be more powerful than money. Sure. All right. Time and time again. So therefore, equally therefore, you can say that even though in fact he experienced a very profound kind of enlightenment, he still had an overriding Apologos. that blocked him from even appreciating the very thing he was experiencing. Is that right? Yep. Our, yeah, we keep seeing this. 
over and over again. Not only in dreams, but just every day. Mm -hmm. Pathologos. Can you, what's more powerful than the pathologos? It's why free. That's right. Reflection of the kind. Truth. The only thing that... Truth. Arrived at by reflection. Yep. Right? She's going to stand up, Jeff. Put it in your pocket. Like, got the questions on the board? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're talking about... Oh, so Pierre... We're talking about Josh. Oh, okay. Well, I'd say I had to include me. It's that bad. I took a class years, many years ago. It was a, a midwifery class in you know, Monday night or something like that at Golden West. And you said uh, it, it was like... What would you do if, you know, if you could, with your eye, see the most beautiful thing? You know, we, we brought it into that kind of a thing. I said, well, I laughed hard because I'm like, I recognize it, I want it, and I turn tail and run the other way. That's <laughs> it. I would know that's what I want and say, but no way. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> this is Josh's talk last night. Uh, a dream exploration? Yeah. He had a very profound enlightenment experience. And he was very upset. <laughs> because As you are. It didn't give him any knowledge. <laughs> had no content. What the hell good was it? Mm. <laughs> So therefore, the very experience he had, he was depreciating it. Isn't, but isn't that, isn't that an amazing kind of pathologist? Well, um, in a way, I, I uh, did, well, did you explore further last night? Like what, what content would look like for him? No. Because yeah. it certainly, it seems like the kind of thing that would become, you're asking is it a, isn't that an interesting kind of pathologos, but to some degree that's... Because he linked it, he linked it to the previous dream that he had reviewed and saw the connection between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Which was... Disillusionment. I think he was disillusioned in the last one. Yeah. He wanted to see more out of the dream. Yeah. He wanted more meaning out of the yeah. dream. Yeah, and he was upset that he wasn't being provided me. I didn't provide him with the kind of knowledge that he thought must be in the dream. Right. right. He expected so it. We linked it. We he linked expected it. it. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So we linked it too. <laughs> But wait a minute, your Looking question is, is, is last night. yeah, uh, I was hoping he would be here today so that we could push it. Well, because um, the, the, where my question is going is, of course, into the nature of the path, his pathologos itself. But at a more general level, I think I asked you recently, <clears throat> having had some recent insights into my own pathologos, I asked you recently, well, isn't that really sort of the sine qua non of all pathologos is uh, a rejection of, well, you've said it, rejection of mind, but also beauty, justice, mm -hmm. right? It has to. That's the thing it has to. Uh, much less that which is observing it. Mm -hmm. And um, and you said, yeah. So to... to just, that's, so what I was curious about was your statement just now. What a curious kind of or in, interesting kind of pathologist. Because the denial of beauty is common to all of them. Mm -hmm. So what did you mean by that comment? What was 
different about it that made it curious for you? Well, one of the frequent themes in midwifery uh, keeps chronic coming up, and that is that very frequently people will have a first-class experience, brilliant light of being in a variety of forms. You speak up here? Yeah. yeah, it's very hard to hear you. Yeah. We often encounter people in the dream reviews who haven't recorded in their own dream an, an enlightenment experience they had in the dream, and when they wrote it out, they didn't remember it, but through analysis and reflection, it surfaces. True. Right. Those kinds of enlightenment experience are often category one, lum luminosity. Oh. What made this so interesting is that it went for the highest kind. You know what the philosophers call nirvikalpa samadhi or uh, the one itself or the one self that is beyond all predicates, and yet it's self-evidently true. So could we say maybe he's more akin to like the problem of the Canadian housewife with their expectations? Oh, absolutely. Or, uh, hey, absolutely. Or maybe like a, a high-level Buddhist or Hindu who gets to this brilliant light and when somebody says, what's the cause of that, and then they get all angry? Yeah. Something kind of like that? Yeah. yeah. That's a good reference to the Can Canadian housewife, yeah. So his, <clears throat> Josh. Yeah, yeah. His, uh, let's see, it's an expectation, but it's also kind of a demand, right? So it's a very strong kind of expectation that he wanted that experience to provide him with, with what he is calling knowledge. And since it lacked it, he felt that he would be quite correct dismissing the experience itself, which he did. You have to also consider that knowledge has a limit. Well, see, according to this gentleman, uh, it may have a limit, but uh, he wants to exhaust it. Mm. <laughs> he wants to accumulate it, right? Uh, have you ever known anyone who, who was caught up in greed? In what? Greed. You said greed? Yeah, a greedy guy. Sure. Wonder. I work for all kinds of them. Oh, oh. Well, he is a greedy guy. <laughs> well, in a better way than the people I work for. <laughs> right? But he's greedy for knowledge. Hmm. Well, his idea of knowledge. Yeah, of course. Well, no, it could equally be even a good one. Okay, but he... Even a good one, even the highest kind of knowledge. Oh, okay. How can, how can, that, be, how can that be true, given what he experienced already? It just means that experience is secondary. Well, most people would say the highest thing you can do is experience these noble states of mind. Sure. And this is saying, uh, that's nice, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but any pathologist will diminish whatever you experience. Therefore, the pathologist has more power than enlightenment experience. In a way, but how can it be true that the greed is, unless I heard you incorrectly, the greed is for an no, such it's... a high thing. The greed is for an enlightenment experience. Well, and this, and by the way, one. I do not, I, I don't have any evidence that that's what the gentleman meant by knowledge. I don't suspect that was the, the, the case. Well, in his case, right. But yeah, but we can assume it. We can assume it and continue with the discussion. Yeah, because your discussion was just that it could be a greed for a higher kind of knowledge. Yeah. And under that predicate, 
I'm saying, how so? Well, because the highest state is not knowledge, mm -hmm. beyond knowledge. It's foolish to look for knowledge in something that, that in principle can't have it or doesn't have it. Yeah, but that's not what... So go back. It, hey. That's not what we're talking about here, though. We're saying just what you said, his experience. Let's assume for the moment that his experience mm -hmm. was divine luminosity. Emptiness. That, I thought that was the assumption. I thought the assumption was, and the name that was put on it last night was emptiness, oh, he went not divine him. luminosity. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. A beautiful experience. And he was what really? And he was waiting for um, okay, content. Okay. He was going, "Where yeah. is my dream? Come on!" What's he was the content. I'm right? gonna get knowledge. It's interesting. Uh, okay. It, in it's a way, it's written up here as one, but you're saying that's not okay. Gotcha. Yeah. In a way, it's like um, this kind of pathologia is, is uh, kind of more. It, um, it's like more invisible. Um, I lost it. I lost what I was going to say. It, 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 hey, we yeah, in a way, he was like a man waiting at a bus stop, wasn't he? He was, you know what I mean? The dream was like, em it had no, it was empty, right? And only he, would, he kept saying, Where, when is my dream coming? When is my dream coming? And impatience, right? There was an impatience. Yeah. Right, and so he'd circle back to that path of logos, right, several times. I thought that was where you were going. Mm -hmm. so. Missed again. <clears throat> it happens, you know. But, but going back, what's more powerful than a path of logos if path of logos can knock out enlightenment experiences, even of the most profound kind? Logos. Logos. Midwife free. Oh. Loyalty, comfort. Right? No. Loyalty to the path of logos. No. Oh. That he cannot believe that the state he was in was of any value. Because in path of logos terms, it not only wasn't of any value, he needed to get out of it as soon as possible, I yes. assume. Quite yes. true. Quite true. When you so, put, put it this, this way. This is so beautiful because it, you you don't need a better case than this. That therefore, people who do gain one or two states, it doesn't follow that that will wipe out any pathologos that they have. No, not without reflection. That's, That's obvious. Right. That's right. Because he wouldn't be, as you pointed out, I wasn't there, but listening to what you're saying, he wouldn't be looking for something else. Mm. No, put it another way. What this really shows is that we don't appreciate the state of mind that we got into with the transmission of the pathologos. Do it again? Oh, oh, got it, got it. Well, what's the last part? Transmission? Yeah. There has to be a transmission scene that brought about the pathologos. Yeah. We don't appreciate that that is an enlightenment state. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And it's like it's like it, it, it functions almost like it's in competition. Oh yes, yeah, I see. I, see. I, I was going to say it's even more primary somehow. Yes. Because it's like it's always in the way. Yes, that's right. Right. <laughs> Keeps telling anything else to move over. So it's actually more powerful than the self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Since, going, it, since it can cancel it, depreciate it, right? It has that overwhelming power. But because we don't appreciate in the transmission scene, if we can only get, you know, someone to really focus on it, like we ask usual questions, which are clever, but that they don't surface that. You know? I 
predicted that a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. I said, we, we talked about one scene that I felt was a transmission scene. Very powerful. No. That. Yeah, that, that's, yeah it, I was waiting for this. Uh, keep going. That blanketed anything that I did after that. Yeah, but can, what but was, was it about the, the transmission scene? Pardon? What was it about the transmission scene that we have a right to call enlightenment experience? Excellent question, sir. And your answer would be <laughs> <laughs> appeared appeared very good. Freedom, openness. Right? M maybe lack of a self-image. Those would be some of the characteristics. But I, I've never heard you push that state. I think Gina hasn't either. Of the transmission, or maybe no one has. I. Oh, uh, it's, it's, the transmission scene as being an enlightenment state. Well, uh, you picked you picked several good terms for it. Yeah. And we need some more. And so did you. Unblock. Kind of like a. It must it, must be. See, in psychology, one of the problems they have is how to explain childhood amnesia. Why is it that everybody doesn't have a memory of the first five years except for minor scattered events? Yeah. We're saying, hey, you don't understand the transmission scene wipes out everything that came before it because That's it shows that it is not relevant compared to what is seen. What is seen in that event, the child has to say to himself, oh my God, I never saw that. That means I'm stupid. That mean, I mean, that means they are very great and I'm minor and I'm second class and all the other terms that go along with it. That's that's where the pathologus trumps the self. <laughs> right? It does. Wow. See, that's why some sometimes we have we're lucky enough to get the person to say, Okay, how rare were the parents at that time? In that state. How unusual were they in, in since they were in a very interesting state of mind. Was it common? Was it rare? It has to be rare. Rare. So, is that where they he they they enjoy knowledge rather than emptiness? I believe like, so. I mean, that seems like that's yeah. what would follow from what yeah. we're saying. Yeah. They get knowledge of who they are and the and what it means to be a family member and what beauty is and justice love, is love, and truth is love, all and all love. Is. Yeah, and so then they they go from being empty and open and seeing. To having knowledge. See, see, Barbara just advanced the notion that there are two paradigms for the ideas, mm. not one. Mm. And the second one, you, the, yeah, the transmission paradigm would definitely get in your way of appreciating any higher state. Yeah, but in that state, from what you just said, right, it has its own now. You now have an idea of knowledge. You now have an idea of what it is to, to, to have mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a kind of beauty. This is, come on, put all of those terms together. That's a, in the transmission scene. Therefore, there is the paradigm mm. or the forms, if yeah, you want to use yeah. platonic language. Yep. That is private, right? The whole, yes. the, the whole system That's of, weird. of Plato emerges on a particular level. Hmm. In an image. Yeah. Right. An image of it, yeah. yeah. Shadow of it. Shadow of it. So that's where Josh got his that so that's where Josh got his expectation of what he wants <laughs> for what what kind of knowledge he wants, right? So are you talking about um, like really, really contemplating that transmission, like really 
going back there through memory and then like meditating on it? You don't even need to. It comes up in your daydreams. It comes up in your you know every goal you try to achieve. It's right there in your face. It's with you all the time. So that is a contemplation. Sorry, right? Isn't it? I mean, there it is. As you must have seen, because you have a whole series of dreams. It seems presenting you with aspects of the same problem, right? Seems to me. Yeah, yeah. That's a contemplation. Yeah, it's, always, it's always there. It's not like you have to... <laughs> Remember it. Like, Let me see. What did they say? Mm -hmm. And Pierre makes the point that they don't even... We, that we make our own conclusion, right? They don't, they don't tell us. They don't tell us. Right. So... It, it's no teaching, only learning. Right. So it's all... We're the author of it all. And yet, while it's not a teaching... <laughs> what we concluded by ourselves must have been intended. We hope, yeah, no, no, but we'll it never know have, that. It must have been intended, no. not necessarily consciously, but it had to be at some level intended. Otherwise, it, your, your predicate that it goes back to the cave could not be true. Because one parent could have a pathologos, give a child another pathologos, but they're different pathologoses. No, the, I thought... So um, for the thing to go for the same pathologos to go back to the cave, unless I understood you differently, it has to be the same pathologos, the same kind of problem, right? And if so, then even though we concluded it at each generational level, what we concluded was what was, in some sense, intended to be included. But never, it has to be a but never right? known explicitly. Never known explicitly, sure. Yeah. And every child has yeah. a different version of it. I think Pete, what Pierre has said in the past is that it's a state that results that was intended, not the specific logos of the teaching. And secondly, although oh, I've not well, seen it demonstrated, that he said that you come into life with a certain... When you choose your incarnation and you're born into this life, you come in with a framework. Sure. You bring with you your education and nurture. And therefore, you, your, your pathologos is going to be a function not only of the imposition of the, of the pathologos, but of what you bring to it. And therefore, it, it, it is not true that your parents intended the specific learning that you make of it. What is true, it seems to me, is that the, they intended, Pierre has, has said, that they, they intended the state that you end up with. It's the state that is the problem, right? They see you open and free and, right, da 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 da, da. and that's, they want to cut that off because that's dangerous to the family. So then they impose uh, knowledge about that state. Anyway, that's my point of view. See what Pierre says. Not knowledge of it. Oh, knowledge no. that so, you conclude. No, I was just saying. An image of knowledge. That was already discussed, right? An image. Mm -hmm. That's different, yeah. So the parent could have a, a completely different image but as long as both are handicapped in this way. A different way. image of knowledge. Well, right, you have to tease out what is, it that you're, what is it that you understand from the past scene. That's not an easy thing, mm -hmm. right? And that's why that term yes. pathologos, it's like one term will have a different meaning in, in your understanding than, the, than it has in reality. And you have to come to the grips with what that how you understood that past scene. That's your logos. That's the family logos that you created. Right, right. So, anyway. Yeah, I'm just interested in, I guess I'm just interested in how similar or dissimilar they are at each generational level. Good, yeah. Pierre has some a, a good story about that, right? That, that person mother, grandmother, daughter, or something story? Yeah. Functionally. Well, he was midwifing one person, and then they said, well, was it a child, or was it a young person? Oh, and they got the mother. So they got the mother, and the mother said, my mother. And so they got a look at the paradigm that was as it was passed down. And then the mother... <coughs> said, hey, wait a minute, I have an early scene, 
and that her mother had done it to her. And she said, I want you to talk to my mother, the ground, the grandmother of the child. And she came. And wow. she lasted about five minutes and out the door. She said, I don't want to see this. So unfortunately, you only got two, two past scenes. You could have gotten three if you were willing to stay. Yeah. yeah. Could I ask too, Pierre? But was you, there? I just, I no, go ahead. So was there a difference between the the grand the grandmother to mother scene and the mother to daughter mm -hmm. scene in the sense of uh, the kind of pathologos? Are, are we saying that what goes back to the cave is just how it, it is, is that it functions to to give you a lower image of yourself? That's what goes back to the cave, or how it functions to give you a lower image of yourself also goes back. to Oh, it's how it functions. So how it functions is similar between, would, would have been similar in mm -hmm. that case. Mm -hmm. that the daughter is carrying a similar hmm. set of problems as that cluster of pathologists that the mother is. Mm -hmm. For the son. Well then, then even though there's a, an ignorance of it, it's, it's, it's not just then that the parent, I mean, clearly they're interested in your getting into that state, right? That post state. But they're also interested that the reasoning or the logos also transmits in a similar way. Depends on what you mean by the logos. Because well, the, the specific logos. way you understand it yeah. is different. Well, for each see, person. I think that's. I think that's. The what function is not. I'm maybe. trying to understand. I think he's saying, if I understand you correctly, that it isn't that there was a similarity in, in the function, functional. in how function. it functions. Well, in how it functions. No. Exactly. Is, is that not the personal logos that's transmitted? Like when you say how the function it, is the function, the logos, the way you understand it, at least in my own experience, is a statement. It's it's like, it's it's an, a statement of of what you see in happening in the past scene. Justification. Hmm. Might include that. I mm -hmm. you know I I haven't, but it's not a it. So it is different. It is an actual understanding. It's put in words and understanding. Yeah, the function is passed down. But okay, the way you understand the function, that's different. The what, words you put on it. Yeah. Not the how of it, but the words you put on it. That's right. Hey, Mom, you called it a patho logo. It is a private logo. Right. Mm. So, I guess the way I was using the word, the word function was to mean um, simply that it, what it whatever it, it the, simply that it pulls you out of that beautiful state. Mm -hmm. But you're apparently not using it that way. You're no. using function for specific, like saboteur is the name of one function, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah. And there's other functions. Right, so that's what has to get duplicated or doesn't get duplicated from generation to generation. Um, put it this way. Why is it that in a family, all of the members, especially if they have a number of children, each one of them has a different pathologos, but they're all functioning in the same way? <laughs> function the way that Barbara and I just agreed to use it in the sense that for instance they are all all three children are now saboteurs. No. But they have different pathologoses. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Same thing with twins. Why don't twins have exactly the same pathologos? Wait, you just said the three children do have the same pathologos. Functions the same way. 
He keeps saying the personal logos is different. He has said that. That's no. the latest statement of that. No. Well, maybe that's the part I'm not following. <coughs> So if you were to able to label how your parent functioned and how, how you're functioning as, say, for instance, a saboteur, it's not the same thing as the personal logos. Do I follow? <coughs> well, um, just to use a... Uh, uh, it, may be, it may be important for the family to understand certain key words in their own special way, right? Such as, <clears throat> uh, a parent may secretly communicate to all of the children in one way or the other that they're all peasants. But that belief can be expressed throughout the whole life of the child in a variety of ways. So that it isn't a single event, but the repetition of that event symbolically through many, many particulars reinforces the original pathologos and keeps it alive. Each one of those symbolic situations it's like, an, it's like a consistent interpretation of the original transmission. That parent may have this idea that it's important to have all of the members of the family recognize the need to identify with husbandry. But the way that will be instilled will be different in each case. because they have to find the child in the states of mind that is open to that transmission. And that will always be different for the child. Sure, different scenes, different situations, and then the reinforcement that goes on for years afterwards sure. is also going to be different scenes. So sure, there'll, there'll be different shades, but... And you don't come in with a blank slate. You've made that point, and that's... Yeah. A, when you part of your susceptibility for, for, for a hiccup. Not for susceptibility. Or how you handle it when it's given to you, right? It's no, it's framework. part of the logos. You come, in, you come in with a framework for interpretation, and therefore each of the children comes in with a different framework. Okay. And they then, with right. the same function, they're going to understand that function in a different way. Jeff, you don't have a an exploration you can reflect on in asking these questions of your own? Because, I mean, it seems like that would ground it better than theoretical. Because that's what I'm doing. I'm reflecting back on Pathologos explorations. Gina probably heard some of her explorations in the word peasants, right? Did you hear that? He, he, he said that some parents want to make all their children into peasants, right? And I think that was your dad's idea, wasn't it? Peasants, I don't peasantry know, or it? nobility? I don't know, was it? I haven't talked about that until just recently. Oh, that was a long time ago I heard that, but that's okay. Well, the reason, okay, that I guess I just... Um, like sure, it would be better, but there's years. also clearly a place for theory because that's how we use that's it. That's a no? Right? Is that a no? You don't have one? Many, no, of course I do. I have many past scenes that we've looked at. Um, not many, but several. But what I'm, but what I'm saying is, um, I guess I'm specifically interested in, for instance, in the case of a parent interested in three children seeing themselves as peasants, um, of course they're going to get the transmission in different, in different ways. No problem with that. But then when those children grow up and they have their children, are they going to be interested in their children seeing themselves as peasants? Yes. In that way. Yes. Or functionally as pe peasants anyway, whether they use that language. 
they'll function as peasants. They'll function as less than, they'll see a distinction between people of excellence and themselves. Or they'll call it an identity and say only people who are peasants will have nobility. So, the, so the word, so then, the word then peasant, then the, the word peasant is a pathologo. Mm. <laughs> yes. The, the idea of a, of a peasant is a pathologos itself, depending upon what a person adds to that idea of peasant. Because they can be very noble peasants, right? They can be very wise, they can be very, they run through the whole gamut of well, the way people are. The reason it's of interest to me, Barbara, is because in reflecting on my own scenes, um, I can also, as part of that, reflect on scenes that my mother has and my father have shared with me. And I can ask myself, whatever, whatever image it was that I've concluded, whatever label I've put on the transmission of my own pathologos, I'm wondering if how it played out in their generation. Um, whether that gives additional insight into my own or not, I don't know yet. But, um, Are you concerned that that little machine might slip off the very slippery cover of that notebook? It would seem like it would be safer on the other side of that notebook. What, what are you talking about? This. Pierre has been tug was tugging on the cord, and I'm saying that little device might be better off. Actually, I would rather... Regina noticed it too. I'd really rather you just slip it in your pocket or something you know, mm. in case you stand up. Okay. Yeah. He told me you had power over the little box, <laughs> which is hence the question. Not true. So you have scenes, like but you haven't done the comparison. You have your parents' scenes, you have your scenes, but you're still waiting on. I have actually. <coughs> I have thought about those scenes, and I, I guess that is what is driving my my questioning. Um, what, what, why would you be interested to see that? I would be fascinated to see that. Friggin' A. On the other hand, I don't see what holds you back. Warm it up. Because this guy here would probably help in that exploration. Assuming his past interests, especially if you'd done some work and were baffled. Well, like, what's that? See, like in my case, uh, one label that has come up is torturer. Uh, and yet, both at my level and at my Thank Ma's you. level, n neither of us would think of our parents as, at least originally, as, as torturers. Of course. That's right. So it's interesting to think, and I, I loved my grandparents uh, on both sides, uh, and saw them as gentle. <laughs> uh, <coughs> And I only have a few scenes that my mother or father have played back for me. And of course, one parent's gone now. Um, I think really what it would take, though, I mean, we've, we've, I've had discussions with my mom, and, but I think what it really takes is um, a, a desire on that person's part to really go into midwifery and get a past scene. And I don't think we ever did that. Yeah. Right. So it just eludes at this point. No. Something that comes to my mind is that um, I don't think you could um, transfer a, a belief that you don't have. Because it's like, I don't think you would have the, um, mm. you wouldn't have the, the certainty in it and the, uh, um, the, the motivation and the kind of um, all those kinds of um, attitudes that it takes to make it believable I don't think they would be there if you were <coughs> just like, like I don't think you can just, just for that reason it doesn't seem to me that you can that transfer another image yeah that plus if other than image what you have right plus another image would not have the power to be it wouldn't be threatened 
by someone being in, in, in a higher state. You're just pulling one out of the bag, right? Oh, I want to transmit this one. Also, I think that what we're, what at least, and this is what I'm struggling with, and is one reason why I suggested <coughs> that you consider some of your own past understanding, is that I can't recall right now a single example of a statement of a learning, but I know that it went beyond naming the role, right? That there was a statement about myself that in relationship to the scene, that it was a statement about myself in relationship to the scene that is the way, a c encapsulation of the way I understood the scene. And that is what at least I was referring to when I was talking about a learning. It went beyond just the one name, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So, but I'm sitting here going, eh, what was one of those? <laughs> you mean like, more like a title rather than a, a role that describes the function? No, I mean like my role, like I, I'll come up, let me try this one. My role is to be the accompanying person, the mm -hmm. companion to any of my sisters in any of their endeavors. I'm not supposed to seek anything on my own. That's wrong, okay? Now that's kind of a semi-paragraph, but um, so it includes a functional term, accompanist, or whatever you want to call that, the, the wife, <laughs> the dog of, the, of my sister, and that you're not expected to contribute anything or in direction or quality or anything, you just go with. Okay, so it, it yeah, it, it contains a uh, function, but it's also um, contains value judgments about my sisters versus me, about um, f the freedom I would have to choose my own goal rather than theirs. I don't have that freedom. Um, I don't know, so there's a statement about what I understood to be true about myself and my world, maybe self-view, worldview, that came from, comes from a past scene and includes a f functions but isn't limited to the names you put like torturer mm -hmm. on your function so that the learning is more than just the well, function, the name you put on the... And your grandparents should in fact appear like really nice, gentle people. If they didn't appear so, you wouldn't have bought the bullshit. Are you um, pointing towards like the conditions for there to be the functions like kind of the the backdrop or the um, the space in which the functions can be like uh, there is a space in which the function can be but I was trying to give an example of what I was referring to as a learning from the past scene a lesson that I never verbalized to anyone I never examined Right until I blo was blocked in my own pursuit, and yeah, it's built up of the context or milieu, not only of that transmission scene, but of the many scenes that build up towards that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that's not all it is. It's like, right. oh yeah, now I get it. Now I understand what they've been doing to me. They've been doing to me, so I would do this role. Everything falls in place. It's like bingo, which is like all the function. Um Impli it implies that they have this certain status and you have this certain status. The function mm. implies a lot of things that isn't said. And the learning is an insight into how it all fits together as a whole. Right. The milieu. You get like a, a sense of the milieu. Like a, mm -hmm. a and sense for your the, role. Yeah. the territory. Yeah. Right? Okay. Names for everybody. Quite right. Quite insightful, yeah. You get names for everybody, in the, like my sisters are the ones who take the lead. Yeah, and then you can, and then you can um, recognize it yourself because now you have like a map. Yeah. You can be like, oh, he's that kind of person. Or, mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. So in the first five minutes of an encounter, like you did with your friend, your the woman that you that you talked about, the first five minutes of the encounter, Pierre used to say, you know, you know, you know the dynamics. And you either buy into it as what you want, or you don't. They too. Uh oh. <laughs> the smile of experience on our friend over here. So there's two. Um, Pierre, you were talking about enlightenment, that there was an enlightenment moment, but it looks like there's two. One is the openness from which the pathologos obliterates, and then there's the 
seeing at that moment where you have, you can make a choice that is, I'll go this way or I can challenge it? No. No? Oh, you mean the moment of truth <clears throat> you're talking about? Or not? Right. The moment of truth where the <clears throat> child could challenge but doesn't. What do you, why say no? But that's not present. What do you mean it's not present? <clears throat> that's why a pathologos can only be introduced at a certain point in a person's life. That is before they reach the level of intelligence where they know they can respond and they know that they can say why or oppose. Mm -hmm. It has to be on a child who hasn't yet developed maturely. It has to be immature people. So there isn't a seeing that goes on of which the child... Can choose either to accept it or reject it. That's right. Mm. But you, you call that a moment of truth. You have called that the moment of truth. Uh, be careful how you use the word and the example, but go ahead. That they have, that they could have stood up at, at that point to challenge what the parents are saying, that is, or doing. Oh, I, I'm not following, but because uh, when I use that kind of language, okay. um, it's to let the, bring the person to realize that they were not able to make an alternative judgment. Yeah. Were not able to reject the teaching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how powerful it is. Or, yes. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. See, the, child, the child has to be brought to a scene where the child has to come to the conclusion that I never knew they were so wise and perfect. I never knew there were these kinds of values that were playing a major role in the family. Right. I never realized all of that. Now suddenly I have a key into all the whole family. Right. I now can see that I have to then play within that game. Mm -hmm. There it's aren't any alternatives. Perfect trap. Yeah. It's such a perfect trap. Yeah, it's a perfect trap. <clears throat> We used to explore the path, the path seen as a mandala, you know, as a circle, and talk about the path, the fact that at key points in the scene there are prior scenes that block you from have, from going a different way. Like they have to set in place scenes that will keep you moving along the, so you don't escape along the path of the pathologos. And when they all fit together, that's insight. Yeah. It, it, remember, it also has to include the idea of love and caring. Mm. Mm. Yep. It's a fictitious. It's a fictitious idea of love and caring, but nonetheless, it has to be as far as the, the parent can move and uh, label whatever they're doing. Mm. So they have to look caring, right? They have to appear loving. They have to appear beautiful. It's all in the realm of appearance. And they're doing it all for you. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Essential. Yeah. Solely. And secret. Hey, no one would have a pathologist in the whole world if they just the next morning would talk about what happened yesterday mm -hmm. in the pathologist scene. Point out to the kid, hey, you know what? You know, I inherited this from my family, you know, and I was pretty foolish in doing what I did, you know, but let me tell you, I want to straighten you out. I may have looked real great, but, you know, that's a fiction, and what I said, you know, it would be better on reflection that I hadn't said or did what I did, and what you were doing actually was, actually, it could be questioned, but the state of mind you were in was very exalted, and... Uh, that bugged me, you know, that's part of the thing I'm not allowed to be in, and therefore I imposed it on you. You didn't have a problem, which one? No, or a different one. Yeah, have a different one. You still might have to say, how come you sprung it on me? Yeah, where were you? You know, you're so damn smart. <laughs> and then we have to talk about it the next morning. 
I wonder what the child goes through immediately after the transmission scene. Like, is are we just like walking around like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like kind of like, like I want to know what happens that next twenty hours to the child. Here's what happens after you got in those discussions with your father about women? Hmm. Cool. He's sharing secrets, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Oh, does he say, hey, kid, uh, uh, your mother isn't here. Call, 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 call your mother and so she can sit in here while I... <laughs> look, look, look at this! Here I'm offering something I'm getting laughed at. What if you Actually, when you said um, your mother isn't here, I was like, yeah, that's, that's, he probably said that. Mm -hmm. But then he didn't do the other part. <laughs> right. Where, where he called her. Yeah. Get her. Can you remember what it was like after the teaching? I would, I would really like to. It's very, it's, I don't know, it's very like sneaky, like snaky. It's kind of like, hey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then it's Safe like secret. And then, yeah, and then we go back to like, not talking about it, but it's, it's there. <clears throat> right? Secret. But what was it like having it done privately? Yeah, you were going to go on and tell us what was it like the next day or two after such an event. Yeah. You've now been initiated into secret teachings. You could walk around, Mother. And you've been in, you, you have been initiated into a sacred order. The family. Actually, well, the family or men? Or, you know, <laughs> being able to say, ah. Oh. Hmm, woman. I know what that's. I know that. Yeah. Was there any of that? I would love. I'm like. I'm like grasping. Mm. I, I don't have enough uh, stuff to yeah. <clears throat> to reach for that kind of scene. But you could. You could see that. The secretness between he and his father gives an image of how his father would play out with his mother. And sure. That, and that this secret connection with the, your father would make sense mm -hmm. and put him in a, in a knowledgeable position then and showing how your father is caring to your mother. Just there, just in general. I could see that. With my own, but. I remember him saying that you can't let them know that you like them too much. <laughs> that that was a major. That's that's like a, a carved into the. Stone. That's the teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you can always appear indifferent right. to maintain your stability. Maintain <clears throat> exactly. <clears throat> that's what allows allows me to maintain that superior. Image. To get away with pretending to be indifferent mm -hmm. when actually I really do care. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a little boy yeah. coming up, I was sitting next to him on the bus, I was going to school, and he said, I can tell how old you are. And I said, Really? He said, Yeah. And he, he looked at my face really carefully, especially my nose, and he said, You're, I know I've forgotten, it was 26. I said, No, I'm not. I'm 28 or 30 or whatever it was. And he would not believe me because his dad had told him how to tell how old a woman was. I said, I, I pulled out my driver's license and said, mm. right? But it was really funny because it was like, I know how old you are. Luckily, I escaped them. It would be younger. great to know whether he was, up to that point, he was successful 100%. Yeah, Renner. probably, yeah, right? Renner. Probably. It probably worked most of the time. Or they never really. That, that reminds me of um, Julie's scene of going over to her friend's house and now she's going to be the teacher. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this now. Yes, because my mother tells me that that's right. So for each hypothesis, there's a different logos. Hmm. And so all together, that's the logos. Hmm. So our family pathologos fit within the, yeah, the hmm. eight, the whatever, nine hypotheses? Hmm. No, they can't fit within the nine. Let's yeah, but each one has its own logos. Hmm. That's good. Does the family pathologos spread across all um, nine, eight hypotheses? Hmm. If you're fortunate. I was going to ask you, does this is related? The nirvik kalpa samadhi you use like as if they were the same, one self, right, oh. with that state, mm -hmm. and um, so and that that in turn was the state you could be in when you received a transmission. So, in the same way as we did with the brilliant light of being, where we suggested that you could penetrate it more. And deeper and deeper and deeper into the brilliant light of being. Is that also true for the second state or not? Because it's because it seems like well, I don't know. It just seems like emptiness or the state Josh well, was in. <clears throat> uh, see, if you have only negatives, then <clears throat> mm, you, can't. you you can pick up a rock and say it's not much different. Between that rock and yourself, and all those negatives. I mean, the, uh -huh. the feel of that. <laughs> because it means it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you pull them all together, it means it's nothing. Hmm. And that's unfortunate. So I, I stuck up another second. idea on top of all the negatives. Self-evident. Sorry, the self-idea on top of all the negatives? No. Yeah. And then there's that one difference between the first hypothesis and the conclusion that didn't we, haven't we picked mm. out one difference, which I don't remember. Which is a I'm very curious one. Yeah. What is the difference between? Um, intelligence, ontos. Being intelligence. Yeah, you know, that and describing the difference is that he says that the state of the self does not include intelligence. Right, ontos. Being. Being. Hmm. Which, in a way, is curious because uh, he could have said the same thing about the one, but he mm. didn't. Mm -hmm. So. How do you account for that, Pierre? Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, is that the first? Or Sorry, did you want to He does say, though, you can't call it by one, even one. Well, that's the first. That's that's not the point we're on. But oh, you're quite I, right. I, okay, I thought it was. Okay. No. What, the point is that in that state, there isn't. What's your point then? The, the issue, I, I didn't, it wasn't a point, but you could talk about it as a point. <clears throat> How do you distinguish between the one and the one self in the first hypothesis? Okay. And Pierre said, that they don't attribute uh, being, that is, intelligence, to the self, but they do attribute it to the one? No, they don't Sorry, attribute it to Sorry, there's either the back way around. No. Oh, they don't attribute <clears throat> it, but do they attribute it to the self? No. But they mention it with the self and not with the... Yes. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Then they're not attributing, just that they mention Hmm. Is that right? At the end? They mention it is not 
Yeah, you, you've abbreviated the comment, so I can say yes without be, without being sure that you're All following right. yeah, fully I'm the not point. Sure. Because Aristoteles does not say what you have just said about the self, I cannot accept. Mm. Right. He does do that again. He does not say, I cannot accept what you said about the self. That's correct. He does not say that. That's true. He just says possible. No. I can't remember. What probable? No. Oh. It's not, uh, it's not likely? No. I don't know. I don't remember. Can it be true or true? He objects to what is being said about the one, not about the self. Oh. Mm. That's right. So he wanted to preserve the idea of the one. Okay. That twists it a bit for me. All right. So does that mean that he, does that put kind of an interesting, pro, more, put more weight on the idea that the good, the one is, is different, the good and the one are different, and the source of the good and the one is the self, because of the way he lays that out? Because then the good and the one have some form of being in that you can give them a name? No. Or, no? Okay. Then how would you put No, them? no. How would you I, I don't think we can attribute being to his understanding of the one or the good and the first hypothesis. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. He does a beautiful job mm -hmm. with negatives. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then he shifts to the soul. Mm-hmm and then says much of the same thing that he just concluded about the one. With the addition of another negative? Right, with that. With and he makes that point that you cannot attribute being to the self. Cool. So Aristoteles, kind of therefore, does not object to that. He objects to the idea of the one that has been developed in the first hypothesis. That hmm. you can't you can't attribute being to the one? Is that what you're concluding? No. Okay, I did what I heard was that you couldn't attribute the Aristoteles didn't object to the fact that uh, you couldn't attribute being to the self. But No. Okay, then That's not what is it, you're raising an interesting point, but that's not the point of the conclusion. Okay. I yeah. think you have the text in front of you. You can yeah, see I'm it. Just, it's just that I'm not hearing sometimes. Therefore, <clears throat> is it possible that these conclusions have to be in this way, peri tohen, about the one? Yes. Yeah. Parmenides. And then Aristotle answers, to me at least, it certainly does not appear to be in this way. Right. So in no way does he object to the exploration of the self in the first hypothesis, but he's taking exception to the understanding of the one. And we don't really know what exception he's taking, do we? Well, we can see the difficulty that he, that he then has in the other like if we line up all the difficulties mm. he has, we're going to be able to answer that question. The difficulties in, in the first hypothesis uh, or the, throughout? Uh, both. Oh, first both. and second? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. That's so interesting. So, mm, mm. No idea. Could you give her the Stephanus? The Stephanus? One would think after all these times. Uh, okay, 142D. One D. A. Or A? Yeah, right, sorry. You think I'd have that actually. So, in reading that, it, starting according, he concludes, he's got about four paragraphs. Accordingly, then, the one in no way whatsoever participates of Lucia. 
okay? It is not likely. That's when he starts coming in with his less definite answers. Before that, he makes statements of, it is not possible, most true, by all means. But at this point, he's stopping and saying, accordingly then, the one in no way whatsoever participates in Lucia. It is not likely. Accordingly then, the one in no way whatsoever is. Well, it has come to light. Accordingly then, neither is it in such a way so as to be one, for if for it would already be by being and by participating of Lucia. Whereas to reason the one whereas according to reason the one is neither one nor is, if one must trust in such a logos. I dare say so. But could any non-being be of self of the one which is not? Or could any non-being belong to this self? And how could it? Accordingly then there is neither name nor logos nor any knowledge nor perception nor opinion that can be attributed to the self. It has not come it has not come to light. Accordingly then neither can it be named nor be spoken of nor be opined nor be the object of knowledge nor to the real beings nor do the real beings have a perception of the self. It is not likely. Therefore it is possible that these conclusions have to be in this way about the one. To me at least it certainly does not appear to be in this way. So he's saying that he's saying the conclusions that the one in no way whatsoever participates in Lucia, he's not agreeing with that conclusion at this point, or all the other stuff before that. It is not likely. if he can't make those points about the one, he can reject the idea of the self. Really? Okay. To the degree to which they share, hmm, share. because share the same yeah. negatives. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Or the ones, if you, so, you, so when he talks, says that it's, it certainly does not appear to be in this way to the one, he's saying it also to the one self. Or simply self? Neither. Neither? What? Which one? Then? Yeah, you asked a question that has three parts. The latter two, you inserted the idea of the self, which isn't consistent with what's there. Therefore, I answered the way I did. So rather than go back, make a fresh statement without that reference. and. Therefore, is it possible that these conclusions have to be in this way about the one. What is his worry? About the one. Yeah. You were adding two views of the self in your last answer, well, my, and I dropped that. Well, in that he talked about oneself, and then he talks about self, is he including, can can you conclude that since he's coming to, he's, he does not, it does not appear to be in this way about the one, that he is also in, you can infer that it's also to the self or the oneself or neither. 
I think you're asking whether or not, <clears throat> given that statement, whether or not he is adequately understood and defined the idea of the oneself. Aristotle. I did. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't understand what he said. Did. Okay. Well, I'm answering, but it doesn't. For some reason, it's, it's there. Well, my answers are not adequate. So you have to talk about that. Well, what is it that it's not? What is it that it's not adequate about? Aristotle doesn't think that the description that Socrates. But, but you know, you have the answer to that, Trina. What he's not accepting according to the quote is what? What? That's all. Okay. So you got an answer to it. Okay. Well, in the discussion, it sounded like there was some relationship between the one and the self. And therefore, you could infer that if he concludes that about the self, one, that it, you can infer about the self, that he also has. Yeah, it. I think he's got those two switched, but that's okay. But I thought that's what was concluded. She's but, talking about working backwards from the conclusion, yeah. right? If he objects to the conclusion, Aristotle's about the one, yeah. that therefore, does it also follow that he's objecting to the conclusions about the self? No, I thought it was about the discussion you guys were having, so. But that too, that hmm. too. Hmm. I thought that's what you were saying. You could do. Oh, well, Pierre was saying that, well, you were, you're saying that his, Aristotle's problems start where you started reading, right? But I think that Pierre said you need to look at where Aristotle's box in the second and in the first, isn't that? what you said, and that would be a way of determining, um, okay. sure. yeah. his difficulty. Yeah. yeah. Well, and therefore his position. He definitely says over here, it is not likely. According then, the one in no way, no way whatsoever participates in Lucia. He isn't like that. It is not likely. He doesn't say, I agree. That's what, Ueoikin or what? What's the answer? Yeah. What's the great? Hmm. Yeah, he does. Are we going to have tomorrow, and or are you? Uh, Nancy said you were going to make a decision about whether or not we were going to have Sunday and Monday Parmenides or whether you're going to be busy getting rid of the leave. Yeah. Uh, depending on what, here's the difficulty. Uh, this big religious event is going on. Yes. May Day celebration? Yeah. Yes. Cinco de Mayo? No, no, I think it's May, May. Day. May Day. At, at, um, May Day oh, at Waldorf. Waldorf. That was last week. No. Oh, like, oh that's the 30th, right. May day, May first was right, on Monday. Right, right, right. They don't care. So they a lot of things have happened, and I have to wait for them to to settle down before I can make a decision. Uh -huh. But it looks like I may not be able to be, do it tomorrow. Okay. I would like to, but uh, let's so, see. I'll know in another couple of hours. And Nancy will probably email us with the yeah. result. Yeah. Okay. Are you leaving, or do you have time for a dream, or where where are you at? Well, let me see. That. And actually, I remembered some more parts to it after I wrote it. Hold on to him just for his decision, maybe. Or you can ask me a couple of questions mm -hmm. and I can go reflect on it. Response. What? Please. Let me read it first. Well, he may have to go. <laughs> That's okay. He can go. If I'm, you know, so. He started. He betrays, he's sizing it up. Right. He betrays the ability to size up a dream without having had the discussion yet, right? Oh, 
Okay, want to read it? <laughs> okay. Uh, just before that, though, I, what I remember uh, earlier in regard to, to this was I remember um, there was, I, I had stepped outside of the house here. I had stepped outside. Something had caught my attention and I had stepped outside to this door and there was a gale going, a, like a force, a, a huge windstorm and it was just blowing everything around but I noticed that it wasn't uprooting anything, the trees were all pretty solid. That was what I remembered before that and that's why I, it related to the clothesline being down. Okay. Um. So. I, so I went outside and saw the close. Yes. Sorry, John. Would you mind switching places with me just for the camera? Since you're doing the midway fee and you guys will be Do close. I mind? Yeah. Yeah, I do, but that's right. <laughs> you asked the question. You can still no, say no, no. it. It's not an ultimatum. It's all right. Good answer, good answer. All right. Okay, so that was what happened before. So I went outside and saw the clothesline was down. I thought I should have fixed that, but it wasn't serious. I just have to find the rope I have or get another line kind of like wire. It stayed a long time, I thought, and it should be, and I could hold the, and it could hold a lot of weight. That's why I wanted to get the certain line, uh, a lot wire. I then saw the patio gate open and saw Sebastian and Isos out. They were in the patio. I thought that Sebastian wouldn't go far and would probably catch the gophers. I, Isos didn't think she would go, I didn't think she would go for the gopher, but the birds. Mm -hmm. That was it. What do you make of it? How should we proceed with it? Uh, well, given the first part, um, I don't know, it just seems like trivia. What's the goal of the dream? By the way, it's not trivial. But okay. I, what's the goal in the dream? It was like I heard a sound that was real important. Like something was disturbing. There was dis some disturbance on the outside. That's when I came. I didn't write that down because I just, mm -hmm. I had thought about it later. But there was this gale wind. Mm -hmm. But then when I stepped outside, this is what happened. So what do I make of that? Well, in 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 the in the, all of the, although there's this gale force going on, uh, it looks like there's things that are not not damaged by it, not 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 harmed by it. That's all I. Is there any, there are two parts to it. Is, are they different or similar? Or? Are you talking about the gale force first? No. Oh, okay, just the first part here? Oh, okay. Yes, there, after I'm talking about the wire, the wire uh, clothesline, and then I see the patio gates open. That's different. That's about Sebastian and Ethan. Is there anything that's the same? Okay. Mm. Okay. Cool. Uh, would you read the first sentence? I went outside and saw the clothesline was down. That's all. What does that mean? That the white, that the clothesline that was down, that it, the the gale force wind had knocked it down and it saw was, the line down, right? And actually, it wasn't. It was interesting. Interesting. It was interesting because what? it was the way it was placed on the ground wasn't scattered. It was like it was in a circle, like a 
uh, a coiled, coiled, coiled. Yeah, we would now become a master of the second uh, continuum. I thought I should have fixed that, that, but it wasn't serious. I just have to find, well, the problem is I thought I should have fixed that. What's the problem? Uh, I should have fixed that. No. Yes, no. You revealed the path of love. That I should have fixed it. No. Oh. I thought? No. Okay. okay. It's there. But it wasn't serious. There you are. What about that? Under what condition will you do things? Oh, I see. If it's not serious? No. Well, under what condition will I not do something? Hello. Hi, I just wanted to tell you, stay at Regina's. I'm going to walk there. Okay. Bye-bye. Good, good. Uh, I thought I should have fixed it, but... What's the issue that, then? But it wasn't serious. What does that reveal? Well, I don't do anything if it's not serious. Right. <laughs> or don't believe it's serious. Same thing. Yeah. What's the same thing going on in the second part with the cats? Same thing. Uh, I thought Sebastian wouldn't go far and would probably catch the gophers. Yeah. So it's not serious. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. That's simple and nice. What do you make of that? <laughs> My life. Right there. Until it becomes a major deadly crisis. Now we know that the gale, the gale winds and all of that wasn't serious enough. Yeah. Or it revealed that you should have done something to make it safe. But your judgment was? Wasn't serious. Bad news. Okay. Yeah, all that gale stuff wasn't serious enough. That's my life. What do you make of that? It's caught in one phrase, serious. Yeah. What do you make of that? What state of mind is that? Well, it comes in different forms. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a big deal. It's okay. Uh, not serious enough. Yeah. All in one word. Not way. important enough. Not important enough. Because it's not serious. What state of mind goes with that in the dream? Read it with that and tell me what state of mind in the dream. I should have fixed that. That, it that moment. Serious. I should have fixed that. What that moment? What state of mind is it in the dream? Find it interesting if you repeat that. I bet you are still going to move your left hand in the same way. Go ahead, try it. Go ahead, say it again. Hello. Got a new phone. Hello. Hiya. Who said something? I heard my this name. This is Kevin Lopez with California Exemption Program. How are you? Some salesman. Oh. Hmm. Hello, who's this? This is Kevin Lopez with California Exemption Program. How are you, sir? Yeah. I'm feeling bad and it's getting worse, and uh, I'm caught between a psychiatrist and my tax man, and if you have any money, please send it to me. Okay. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah. I got a 
try that. <laughs> Next time I'm going to do that. That's great. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do that. Okay. Nobody wants to do business with a person like that. I, I, I suspect he may take my name off the list. <laughs> with a bit of hope. Say, what is that state like? Come on. And you were going to do it, and let's okay. see if you can move that left hand. Well, Go ahead. I should have fixed there it is. recognition of something no, that I failed to recognize. Yeah. And then hold it, hold it, hold it. Hi, how are you? Hi. Yeah, could you say, say that again? Well, my hand gesture was, I should have fixed it. <laughs> but, but it wasn't serious. So I pulled back. Look, three. So it wasn't, it wasn't serious. One. <laughs> Or out. It's not serious. <laughs> this, one, this one looks like a cover-up. Yeah. There it is, but I'll cover it up. Right. Well, up. it's got two levels. One is it recognizes that I did something wrong, and I should have fixed it, and then, but I just dismiss it, and it wasn't serious. And for some reason, that sounds familiar, but I don't have a scene. But that's common. Very common. Very common. That's how I live my life in many ways. So what do you want to do about it? I want to see what happens if you decide to change? Yeah. That's all. See what comes up. See if you can fight against it. Yeah. Uh, you can't get much out of a dream, though, can you? No, can this you? is great. Thank you. State of mind. I just have a quick question. Can I get to the samadhi someday? <laughs> Earlier you were talking about the samadhi. Uh, you were talking about self. I think you were calling it nothing. You were saying nothing. Using that word. Um, and then you said it was unfortunate. But... So that's why you use the word self-evident. Oh. Uh, why is it unfortunate, and why does self-evident make it less so? Well, did it? Well, nothing um, sounds kind of hmm? meaningless or... Look at... Uh, do you know anyone has an interest in truth? Mm -hmm. Who? Me. You do? Well, what is truth? Um, <laughs> self-evident. It's self-evident. <laughs> if, exist if the state of the self is self-evident, then what's the nature of truth? Self. Thank you. Or the obvious, it sounds like. Yeah. And, that's, and that better be obvious. Uh, that is obviously true. That it is self-evident. <laughs> and there's only one person I know who ever put that in writing. Who's that? Brokers. Uh, pardon me. Uh, um, Plotinus. Hmm. Oh. Here, do you remember where? Uh, like Fifth Aeneid. Like Fifth? Yeah. Is that beauty? No. Intelligence. I, I don't have it, but... Uh, I don't have it with me. I should, but... I might have it on my phone. Oh, I maybe I. I. Ta da! You haven't put that oh, in yeah. words, Pierre? You yourself? What? You haven't put that same idea in words or similar? You yeah. know, the obvious, the yeah. self. Well, you said you only know of one person. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you know, don't. I asked. She had a long interest in Tibetan literature. And uh, I asked Balboa some time ago. Mm. to go through the several sections 
that are important to me of Jilopa's teachings and the Tibetan teachings, because that invents, has footnotes throughout the whole, and invariably he's going to quote Latinus. So I said, I would like to see you give your translation of these sections. So this is the result. And uh, um, Five one. Uh, no. Uh, it's, it's, um, five three, I believe. Yeah. Five, five, <clears throat> the intelligibles. And in turn, since in this way self needs no demonstration nor trust, that it is in this way, for self is so and is self evident to self. Five, five. five. Beautiful piece of work. Five, five, three, five, five, two, five, five, one. Five, five. Five, five, one. Yeah. Did, did Juan pick up the self there and the uh, Plotinus that we've read from other translators not? Nobody, nobody translates self. Really. Woman of Mayday hat. Yes. Hey, Nancy. Hey. Hey, what did you bring to St. Bernard for? Very disruptive, you know. You look nice. It's like you went somewhere. Mayfair, over to school. How'd it go? Did the religious event conclude? Yes, and little sprinkles are starting, so it was just in Good. time. Good, yeah. I hope it rains, so I don't have to water. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get one of water unless it's serious. That's right. <laughs> Tina did a short dream. It had a pack of logos contained at that same priority. Mm. Let me ask you something. Well, what do you make of the fact that it's now obvious mm. that it's there, very clear and evident, and she didn't see it? Why is it we can't see our own problem? can't see your own problem until you manifest it in some situation, then you can see it. Unless you have that reflective capacity of the logos. Curious? Is it? That's why we timed this so Nancy could come in, now I can split. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Peter says you guys would be deciding whether or not Sunday and Monday. And so I said, and you will then send me an email. I will. I will send you an email When you find out. Thank you. <laughs> I thought I'd clue you in on your...
tonight. On the Don't agenda here. <laughs> but it will be at David. Yes, David is off. So if it happens, it will be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good. you, sir. Good. Good. Thank you. Good. Thank you for the dream. Thank you. Thank you.